Hello and welcome to the Q&A, or, well, whatever the hell I'm going to call this show, I haven't really thought of it yet. But essentially it's going to be like questions, answers, that kind of thing from the audience. Now I did a quick little poll and this came up pretty good on it, and also I got a bunch of questions from the most recent Woe Daily. Now a few little things first, um, this is not going to be a thing without questions, so if there's anything that you think is interesting or you want to know, then do ask, uh, do ask a question. Now when I say anything, I actually lie, I don't mean anything. Pretty much, if it's general World of Warcraft stuff, like say the question we're going to get in a, in a minute, then ask that, but if it's something like, what do I think about a certain class's balance, what do I think about, you know, like, do you think Druid DPS is too high? Well, I'm not going to answer that. The reason for that is because first, I don't know much about it, and second, it doesn't really, like, mean anything to most people that watch the show, so not really worthwhile. Now, in terms of other things, like other games, general gaming news, even if you want to go into, like, I don't know, life shit, then that's cool. I'll probably mark shows that are non-Warcraft related in some way, probably in the video thumbnail. But uh, yeah, questions in general, just make sure that they're not specific class ones or balance ones or anything like that, because I don't really think that's the aim of this show. Now, um, yes, I think we should get on to it. So the question is from uh, the 4 Kazmadan, um, 4 k Kazmadan. Basically, it's from Kazmadan, and he's the 4K version, meaning he's really high res and good detail, so... Well done, sir. Now, the question is, what do you think uh, will the future of the Timeless Isles... Wait. What do you think will be the future of the Timeless Isles? Yeah, kind of even English. And not necessarily the zone itself, but more the mechanics surrounding it. As far as I've seen, player response has been overwhelmingly positive. Um, and with that in mind, do you see them implementing a similar zone in the next expansion? And um, he also said that also, uh, sort of addressing the leveling issue, what if they put a Timeless Isle-like zone um, like in the level experience uh, so that you could level instead of grinding quests in another zone. Now I really see this as two questions. First of all being the kind of max level Timeless Isle style place and then the second one being the leveling issue. So I'll tackle them in that order I guess. Now for the Timeless Isles, first thing I should probably say I don't really, I don't know like I think it's been a positive response. I wouldn't say over overwhelmingly. There has been a lot of flaws and bugs and kinks and pretty much things that like Blizzard have definitely seen and learnt from, I'd say that's absolutely true. Stuff like, um, in PvP servers, the place is an absolute clusterfuck. I mean, I don't even know how you could get anything done on a PvP server, especially one that has the newest faction bounds, and hell, even if you're, like, if you're in a faction imbalanced PvP server, I just don't know how you get anything done on the aisle, and I understand that's part and parcel of PvP, but... When you're forcing every ma- not forcing, when you're kind of giving new content that's only for- really only for max level players, and PvP's involved, and there's two factions and a server, well, it's just gonna, like, come up with problems, and that's really a serious design issue, I'm not too sure how they're gonna fix that, but, uh, yeah, actually, PvP people, I don't- like, how do you get around with that stuff? I guess you need to form, like, big raids and shit, but, you can, of course, you can't do, like, quests when you're in a raid group. Huh, I, yeah, PvP's a problem. Now, the next thing will be mob respawns. Basically, you need to, like, form a group, and, uh, you know, it's an MMO, of course, forming groups always should be, or at least, it should be a very viable option. But I do think mob respawns should be a little bit more reflective of the amount of people there, even if it means they are respawning very fast. Perhaps I would say that they should have a large, a more larger pool of, uh, like, spawn points. Right now, you know, they might have, in Firewalker Ruins, they might have, let's say, 20 spawn points. And it will always just be a mob will spawn in this spawn point. It will be the same one. How about they have 50, 60 ones, 50, like 60 spawn points, where like the specific ones the mobs uh, spawn at are different each time, and that means they can dynamically increase the spawn rate based on where players are in that specific zone, so that, like mobs don't appear right in front of a player. Uh, that they can see if there's like a farming group, then it can detect. Well, there's a farming group to say the right hand side, and there's a bunch of players looking around for mobs, so we'll just spawn some mobs away from the farming group. You know, things like that to sort of balance out the mobs and just handle respawns better instead of just having 20 spawns which will just sort of increase in the amount of like spawns they do to the point where it's a little bit ridiculous. I remember there was times in say Wrath where there was some mobs that were actually, well, no it was Cataclysm, there were some mobs that were actually spawning faster than they were being killed. It was very strange. But yeah, I think more mob spawns would really solve a thing like that. And perhaps make them a little bit more intelligent and, dyna and dynamic so that they annoy people less, because at the end of the day, when you just want to get your 20 rares, you don't want to commit to being in a group with people, you just want to go there and do it, and say you want to show how rap as well. It means you're going to have to deal with that complete clusterfuck in uh, just the places where mob respawns are a little bit janky at the minute. So yeah, I think that's the thing. Also, Zergy bosses are a problem. 
Uh, I just think it's a little bit weird that you have all these rare mobs and they just kind of go from like max health to dead in like two seconds. So it, like, it doesn't really reward exploration. You need to first explore and do all that shit and then like be there in these specific three seconds in which the mob is found. So I think perhaps they should make world bosses that are like way higher health pool. Relatively damaging, but way higher health pool. But don't make them like in the current sort of method of doing a rare where the rare is, you know, like it spawns every X amount of time, it starts with X amount of health, it scales like this. I think just more dynamic rares that maybe just are wandering around the world and are very rare. Maybe one that only spawns once a day, once a week, but have loads of things like that so that it's always feeling sort of fresh and different and the bosses feel less zergy. It is a bit of a problem, like if you're trying to get your, what was it called, timeless champion thing? Then you're literally just having to camp spawns. And camping spawns is not good in game design, I don't think it is. There's definitely more dynamic and interesting ways that I think they can handle bosses. And the next thing I would say is size. I don't think the isle is big enough for it to last as long as Blizzard want it to. Now don't get me wrong, I love the isle, I think it's the best bit of solo PvE content they've done. Uh, this expansion, not solo, but you know, like endgame PvE, you know, X random island that appeared over here. It, I just don't think it's big enough. And there's not enough content there, that's for sure. I know that probably a lot of the development time was still put in, like, making the actual systems that make the place run. I still think it should be bigger, though. Uh, like, yeah, it's it's just not that big when you think about it. There's the whole Ordon area, that's not that big. There's the Ordon Sanctuary. First, I'm pretty, I'm cool with it being closed off to people because, you know, if you have that legendary cape you, cape you put in work, and it's cool to have something there that people can aspire to get into. Such as the Ordron Sanctuary. Problem is, the Ordron Sanctuary is really just one world boss, which is, eh, whatever, cool, it's a world boss. And then a bunch of mobs. Maybe make something more interesting, I'm not too sure what, but that would be good. As for just the general place, I think that it's like there's very specific places that they designed, and everything else like around that is filler. Like, most of the actual isle itself feels like filler, apart from the caves, the Redstone Run, the Gulp Frog area, the Ordon places, the beach, Puiji Village. I just think they should have made it bigger, more, a little bit more spaced out. So, um, I, I think a good analogy is, if you ever been to Disneyland or something, and you say you go to, like, uh, Epcot, and you go to the Asia section, and it's just kind of like, yeah, you've distilled lots of cool things into one tiny place, but of course it's never going to feel like a place because everything's so small and distilled and ridiculously small. I just think they should make the yeah, a little bit more bigger in scope, scale, a tiny little bit more spaced out so the things are just less zerky zerky crazy and it feels more like a place in the world than a theme park that the pandas just rose up out of the sea one day because fuck it, Garrosh got angry. So yeah, that's the thing. But now on to the actual pot pluses and I do think it's brilliant. I said before I think it's my favourite uh, new bit of PvE content that's not a raid. So uh, yeah, as for the isle itself, the future of it, well it's definitely going to be there and what will happen to the future of the isle itself is it will be completely empty one day apart from people who want to get the mount from Hulon and Xiao Hao. But, in terms of concept, the sort of conceptual thing of having more dynamic content, less daily quests, well... I think this is a formula will be edited in the future, possibly quite a bit, but it will still be a thing. Um, it, yeah, it definitely would be different though. I think they'll be taking sort of Battlefield Baron style things, they'll be taking Timeless Isles things, and they'll also be taking 5.1 things and 5.2 things, and when I say 5.1 and 5.2, I mean the quests and the scenarios. Now, for some reason, the 5.2 uh, story scenarios, they bored the shit out of me, I have no idea why, but in 5.1, I just thought they felt a little bit better. I actually think that a problem with the 5.2 ones is that they just kind of, you know, it was still done by a, by a bloody queue. Like, I know Blizzard, you can do a queue with teleport somewhere, someone to, to a place, does that feel like they're in the world? No. And I know it's not as convenient as... it's. Yeah, I know it's not convenient to just like talk to an NPC, fly to a place, but as an example, in like f the 5.1 sort of one, you'd talk to the NPC, they'd be like, oh shit, we need to go to um, the Conway Summit and do some crap because there was the horde and shit. And you would go there, and you'd actually go to this place and it would feel like you're a connected part of the story, instead of sort of jumping from place to place via menu, which is not fun, Blizzard, not fun. There's more ways to do things. So uh, yeah, that's that was one problem, but I think they can refine those things and added that in with the Timeless Isle flavor of, of content, I suppose. So they'll have lots of dynamic content, things are on toggles, perhaps more of a Guild Wars 2 style of thing, where there's events or, you know, 
Say, like in the Isle, how about the Ordon from time to time would attack uh, the Celestial Court? Why the hell doesn't that happen? Shao Hao is talking about how, oh, the Ordon are terrible, they're so dangerous. Well, they just freaking sit up there in their ruins, smoking their pot, and praying to their fire god. That's all they do. They don't actually, <laughs> they're not really a threat. So how about, yep, Celestial Court can be taken over. If you want to access a few quests or a few things there, you need to take it back if there's not people there to defend it. So I think that will be really cool, actually. And just more dynamic, I suppose. More dynamic, more story things. As for dailies themselves, I wouldn't mind there being like two or three. Right now we have one, and the one daily is to kill 20 things. That's not a cool daily. The one weekly, get 50 things from killing things. Not a fun weekly. Great rewards. And it's done in a island, like in a setting that's more fun. And I'd certainly rather have them way more than the Battlefield Barons ones, but I still don't think they're enough. Um, so yeah, perhaps more interesting dailies, not ones that are overly gimmicky. I think it's okay to have one or two gimmicks, but when you start overplaying the gimmicks, it gets a little bit ridiculous. I think that's actually just a general problem. They have all these quests and gimmicks, and they use them so much they don't mean anything anymore, and it's just kind of like they've blown their load on it, which is a bit of a problem. Like I remember in say Wrath, you'd have really special standout quests and you know it's it's like they they would take the quests which made the best sense in the story then they would apply everything they could to make them great and i don't really think they've done as good a job of that in you know, sort of more recent times ah <sighs> so yeah what i think of the isle basically to boil it down it will be similar to the isle i would hope it would be a bit larger than the isle because i don't think the isle is big enough uh it would have maybe a few more dailies and just things to do that are set, or perhaps perhaps they make a bank of they go crazy. Fifty dailies, you get three or two a day, or you know they really do try to keep it interesting instead of the way where they just had it like there are three possible sets of dailies you can get. You will get two every day. Boring. They won't do that. So is that? I think they should mix in story stuff more than just the, the sort of quest you do there. Um, but yeah, I think it's a format that really works. It's going to get better. It's going to be more interesting. And it's all good. Now, to get on to part two of the question about addressing the leveling issue, I'll just re uh, like re-go over what he said. He said, also sort of um, addressing the leveling issue, what if they put Times Isle's Isle-like zone that you could level in instead of grinding quests in another zone? Well, first of all, I don't think they're going to put this in instead of another leveling zone. And uh, I think that the principles of the Isle could be applied to it. I'd say they probably think that having a like this random al like alternate thing you could just go and do would just take away from the flow of the story, take away from the flow of the world, and I actually do think it could do that, you know? Um, it could sort of mess things up if they don't do it right. I think what would be better is to take the good principles, such as dynamic content, and flavor that through their world design, through the quests, through dynamic events, through rare mobs, stuff like that. I don't really think they did rares in a very interesting way in Mist of Pandaria. It was very contrived, you know? It was just like... Yeah, we have 50 rares of zone that kind of spawn from time to time. You can kill them, you'll get an achievement. I didn't, I didn't really think that was too interesting. So I'm not really sure how they make rares more interesting. Um, I do, I do like the way though that the rares all have a unique piece of loot. You can see that on the Timeless Isles, like little rare short thingies that I'm doing. The reason I do those, it's, it's kind of convenient and I have universally so I'm really busy. Um, so yeah, that's a thing. But in general, um, yeah, they can just spice up leveling more. And I do think, you know, things that are exterior like in addition to quests that would be great so say you're doing a quest and oh look the enemy who you say your quest was to kill her later but just say you know randomly that faction attacked another faction you can join in and at the end you'll get a little pop-up and you get a little loot box or something or something cool drops much like in the way that you were when you were defending one of the caravans in battlefield barons at the end of that little event you would get a piece of loot you could click on it and you get some cool things i think that would be really fun Maybe give people some bonus XP or something fun like that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's good. I just think as long as like this is really incorporated into the world and zone design, and I know a lot of people would say this is just Guild Wars 2 all over again. Well, I think Blizzard could do it better than Guild Wars 2 because I, uh, I just I think actually Guild Wars 2 had nearly worse leveling in the World of Warcraft, and I know that probably sounds apeshit crazy to a lot of you. But my problem with it, it was it was just the exact same, but minus any of the interesting gimmicks Will was able to came up. Uh, come up with, I got to max level in Guild Wars 2. First of all, the main like boss dude was literally just a tank and spike fight that lasted way too long. It wasn't fun. So that was one thing. Um, but the other main thing, it was my problem with the zones, is everything felt so arbitrary. Everything just felt like a tick from on to off. Like the dynamic events or the city being taken over by one like bunch of enemies. It didn't really feel like that. 
and the zones just boil down into going into the zone, hitting your map, and going through it like a checklist, because that was the most optimal way to do it. And it was kind of hard to get, like, invested in the world, I guess. So Blizzard definitely have challenges, but I do think that the more dynamic, interesting content they spice up the sort of leveling experience with, uh, the more they do that, the better, because leveling is something that needs a lot of spice thrown in to make it interesting and give people a break from the, mono the monotony. Actually, a really good example is the way that Valve designed Half-Life 1 and 2. They would have a like a level design philosophy or something like that for a level or a section of the game, and they would really like ruthlessly they play test that and you know they just really sort of hard on focus on it until the sort of point where people were like, okay, this is wearing a little bit thin. Then they changed it up to break the monotony of what you're previously doing. So it's always changing up, being interesting, throwing things at you. That is what will make leveling fun, and that plus having. Ex excellent main story quests and lots of like branching and dynamic things to the quests. So that's it for me this time. I uh, hope you enjoyed the Q&A thing. Now, things to do. If you want this show to continue, do leave a question. I have a bank of quite a few saved up um, from the original video, but that does not mean that I don't want more. I do want more, so give me more. And uh, yeah, with that, any like feedback, comments, stuff like that, this is only episode one. That's all appreciated, and I'll see you next time.